Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're going to be doing something that's been requested. We're going to work on um, designing plaques. And this is going to be a multi-video step just because there's a lot to go over. Um, we're going to be using Tinkercad just because it's a nice simple program that lets us do a lot of layouts. And I'm also going to be using some sort of vector software such as Illustrator uh, to do some of my work with. And you can use Inkscape. Coral Draw, I think even uh, Procreate has a version, uh, a vector version of their software. But we're going to be using a, uh, something that creates vector graphics uh, to, to get around some of the limitations that we would have with uh, the organicness of, the, the lack of organic design that comes in Tinkercad. Or a lot of the CAD software out there. So we're going to get started by, by talking about the file formats that are usable. Um, when you import in, everything we're going to be needing to do is going to be needing to be done in scalable vector graphics. I think that's what SVG stands for. But what we're going to do is an SVG format. So everything is going to be done in multiple components. Um, so if I needed to have... Layered, layered elements such as borders and stuff like that I would have to do that in a separate file and so I have I usually whenever I make plaques I usually have one that's called like plaque design and one that's plaque design accents just because it saves me a lot of time and they're both the same size um, just for today's reference we're going to use a test export and I'm going to show you some of the um, inherent uh, issues you have with making graphics but today we're just going to work with a six by six little little area here because that's how big my 3D printer bed is. All right, so here I I just quickly uh, designed something out and just did a cut for it because you don't really need to see a lot of this. But we're going to talk about some of the shape interactions that we're going to have for um, this import that we're going to do into Tinkercad, and so. The first one is going to be just a, a one where the shapes break the area here, and you'll uh, and so it treats this more as like a solid shape. And you'll see it, it, the the reason why it does it is because these shapes don't interact with each other. Now with this one, everything is all self-contained. It doesn't matter what we do, and so it doesn't matter what we do as long as it's all self-contained. And you'll see what what happens to those shapes inside of there. And then the final one was one where I took it and I I divided the whole shape so it's got. Um, different elements for each, each one of these guys so we're going to save this guy down and now we're going to go ahead and take this and we're going to import it into Tinkercad alright so here's our working plane in Tinkercad uh, we're going to import in the file and you can see how it's how one of the three only files that it accepts is SVG files here's my test export file there's nothing special about this it even shows the little preview of all the shapes there and you can even see some of the how it's how it reads even this this small uh, thumbnail some of the cut lines right there from when I saw when we divided so there's a lot of it lot there it also tells you the dimensions and even though I designed it out this out as a six by six um, even if I designed it in millimeters for some reason it reads it as as a huge size on here so we're gonna change this to what's an actual usable size so I'm gonna do it about 45 percent for a scale and I believe this might fit in the whole area All right, so here is our shape. There is nothing special about this. One thing I will point out is that anything you import in, if it has multiple shapes, you can't ungroup this. So this shape is just as the way it is. Even if I try to to force it to break apart or do something else like that, it, this is the shape it is. So that's why we have multiple file formats. So if I have a plaque and then a raised up border or text or something else, they all got to be saved as separate elements and then imported in. All right, so now for our shapes. I remember how I said that the top one, because we broke the, the border, the shapes will then be read as one shape. There it is. That It added together all those shapes, and that's what we got. The second one. Uh, because they were self-contained, they read as a cutout from that, that main shape. So, um, you do have that element right there. Pretty straightforward, though. 
and then this one is the one where we saw where we divided it read in those lines and that's actually a cut in the body so if you were to 3d print this or do anything else with this this would still read as a, a cut into that body and it's all the way straight through so this would actually put walls right here around these shape areas so it's not it's not a good way of, of leaving your work so always make sure that when you do your stuff, you gotta you gotta plan ahead for every eventuality. And so what we'll do is we'll start to design for all of everything we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So let's cut to that. Now for the um, the plaque design, we're gonna do the basic plaque design first, and I'm gonna do one design. It's kind of whimsical. I'm going to take this guy, we're going to copy this guy out. And then we're just going to take this and we're just going to create a compound shape. Right about there. So we'll center it in a second. And right about there. Now I am using uh, uh, Creative Cloud. Uh, Illustrator, so I do have access to rounding corners. If you are uh, doing this manually, it might take you a little bit more, but it's it's easy enough to do. There we go. I'm gonna group these two circles together. I'm gonna bring them out just a hair. Do that, and then we're gonna center all this. Nothing too crazy, but right now we know that that would be combined together as one solid shape. So, I'm going to create also one that's going to be a nice, simple design. We're just going to take this guy and we're going to use our corner round tool here because I, I want to be just a little, a little special today. And so we're going to take this guy and we're going to drag it out right about there. And we're going to use some corner shape options, which is going to go to right there like that. You know, right there and as always if you do something like that you gotta hit expand make sure it's the fill you can also go over here to your shape modes and just unite it and it does the same it does it a little bit faster so those two shapes right there since I did the corner rounding I want to make sure I'm not gonna be at edit those all right so now I have two different and very distinct shapes I'm gonna weld this one together just because I can because we know this shape is going to be solid so today on this one we're going to go take these two copy them we're going to go over to our accent panel and we're going to paste these guys into place and then this is where we're going to take this this guy and we're going to round this guy out a little bit and I want this stroke rounded for right here all right and then we take these guys individually make sure we do the front minus back so now we have the very distinct uh, shape I'm gonna do that in blue but what I'm gonna do is we're gonna turn this into a nice decent little stroke I'm going to copy these, paste these again. Alright, so we have our shapes. And just so I can make it a little bit easier for me, I'm going to take these guys and we're going to create uh, a wider stroke on this one. Because what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure this over to curves. Expand that out. Do our same front minus back. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some accents in. Just because I want to have that nice little clean look to it, 
but I also want to create something that looks kind of fun, you know? We're not going to do too, do anything too crazy here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I choose a different color so I can see it. Control C, Control V to paste into place. And we're going to chop that out. Press Control Eight to make those two a compound shape. Group together. And just to make sure everything is centered. There we go. And then what I think what we're going to do is just because we have these shapes as a compound shape in here, I'm going to go ahead and create an accent line. Now, by all rights, this should be fully uh, fully done right now. I'm going to go hit expand. And so we have a general shape, and then we have one that's going to be a little bit more crazy. Uh, this one, I'm going to make sure they're centered to the artboard. We're going to hit save on our design and our accents. So let's get into Tinkercad and see what all needs to be done. All right, so let's get to actually importing in the 3D files that we're going to be doing this for. So for these plaques, we're going to have to load these, up, these files up separately, and that's why we did this, and you'll see why we're going to do this. So here's my plaque design. We're going to load this guy in at 50% because we saw how big and oversized it was originally. So we're going to do, let's do 45% because I like that number. And we're going to use that same number for our next one as well. And we're going to make sure it's kept to the artboard size. Bam! Like a hammer. That one just fits right on our artboard. That's perfect. Um, now, as before, we can't ungroup this. So it is whatever shape you put in there is going to be that shape. And it's not like I can ungroup it or group, you know, beyond that. Now, for here, if you notice the quality, there is a quality difference. Let's see if I could find a gray that we can see these colors with. So there we go. So you can see the quality. It's as it tries to read in these complex uh, mathematical uh, vectors. And so we're going to keep that quality pretty high. Not because I have to, but because I, I want to. And so we're going to put it at the full 24. That gives me a nice, clean curve with plenty of shapes around every curve, so I don't have to worry about it being too chunky. All right, now let's import in the next size. We're going to drop the size, the default size on this from 10. We're just going to go with 5. So we have our plaque accents. If this works right, these little blue bars should be a cutout shape on here. Now the scale, again, we do that at 45%. Like a hammer, it drops in. All right, so cool. There's our shapes completely laid in. So now... There's going to be two different ways we're going to do it. Working with this bottom one, this bottom one is pretty much, it's basic. There's nothing special to it. So we're going to do something sort of fun with that. We're going to take this shape, and we're going to create a, a an engraved area into it. And you can get as detailed as you want to with this, as, or as, as fun as you want to. Um, but I'm going to create make this a little on the simple side. So we're going to take this. Let's use a cylinder. Hold down shift and with your right click you can drag it in and we can grab some, some fun boolean shape madness. Rotate this guy around to be on his side. And make sure the width on those guys is the same. We're going to center that. And I'm going to center it just because I can. All right, so this needs a lot of steps. This needs a lot of sides. And I'm going to copy this and paste it in place and then drag it to the other side. So what we're going to create is, with a group, a pill shape. 
So what I want to do is I want to taper this guy into this shape here. We're not going to go too crazy. We're just going to try to make it look like it has a bevel shape to the whole edge of this. Now, because there are multiple planes on this, we're only going to be worrying about this area here because this will create a bottom cutout area. And since we know that this is 20 millimeters height, that's the, the direct center. Since this is 10, that's 20. That's the center. We don't have to worry about it being like a concave cut. We don't have to worry about it being too crazy. All right, so let's hold down shift, drag this to center so we can zoom in. Move that up just a hair. And then we're going to center this. We don't need to center it all. I mean, I think it's pretty much close to centered. But we're just going to do it anyways just because it helps. It was moved it just a, a micro, like a micrometer amount. So what we're going to do is we're going to then take this, turn this into a hole. And then we're going to grab that shape and we're going to group together. It's going to take a minute because it's got to figure out the math. But as you can see, now it's got the concave router edge. So now I have a nice, clean shaped line whereas these are all hard edges and and, and when you import in a, a, a vector file into tinkercad there's not a whole lot of edge rounding that you would get so keep that in mind is that you're going to get straight edges on every single thing so try to make sure everything you do goes straight up and looks clean as that that line um, as for text this would be a good time to also have a text file that you have your text preset up if you wanted more than this the standard uh, Arial or Times Roman, uh, but for this we're just going to use uh, this text here. And I'm not even going to change the text. I'm just going to make it so it's 13 tall, and we're going to grab this and yank this right into our top area here. And I'm just going to resize it. So right there. We already have our text. You can see how it raises it up. It's nice, clean lined. And that, that one's pretty much done. Over here, we want this to sit flush. We do not want this to sit uh, raised up. Because this is going to be a nice, clean, clean sign right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this is, is just going to be a nice, simple 10 millimeters tall. That way it sits nice and flush. It looks like it was a piece of, of wood or something like that that was then shaped to be what it needed to be. A little bit of resizing just because I can. And there you go. We have our two signs. And this is a simple plaque design. The more you do to it, the more fun you can have with it. On my next video, I'm going to show you how to make um, some screw holes for this. And then also a keyhole cut for this one because it's going to take a while for that one but for part two on this i'm going to show you how to make some some nice clean revision lines uh revisions to this to make this hangable and also or hangable or mountable and also to clean up some of this jankiness that we see right here so but otherwise than this this is printable so you can apply this with double-sided tape if you need to but we'll go ahead and get into how to mount this for things like on a building so more on that later